In this video, we're going to see bridge rectifier. It is one of the full wave rectifiers which is most used. And in fact, in previous videos, we have seen a center tapped full wave rectifier. And one of the most key aspect was, even though the input voltage was alternating, being positive and negative, the output current flowing through the resistor was in the same direction, which means it's always positive. But we used a center tap transformer earlier, but can we do that without using a center tap transformer with a bridge circuit? So let me take the bridge rectifier circuit diagram here. In which case we have four diodes. Let's name them. This is D1, D2, D3 and D4, where this is the load resistor RL. And at the primary winding we have, and at the primary winding we have main supply and at the secondary winding we have the input voltage vi which is a step down version of the main supply this is called a bridge rectifier because the diodes are put in bridge configuration let me name these points nodes as a this one b this is c and this point is d for our reference vi is vm sine omega t where omega t is taken as alpha for simplicity now we know this waveform that is like this where we have over the period 0 to pi we have positive value and pi to 2 pi we have negative value so let me take the first case where alpha is between 0 and pi in which case vi is positive when VI is positive, the potential at point A would be at higher potential than point B. In that case, as point A is at higher potential, obviously C would be at lower potential compared to A because even B is lower potential. Hence, D1 would be forward biased because P side is at higher potential compared to N side. So let me put that down here. D1 will be forward biased. And if you look at D3, even D3 will be forward biased because point B is at lower potential compared to D because D will be even lower potential compared to A. Hence, D1 and D3 will be forward biased. Hence, they will be on. Whereas if you look at D2 and D4, they will be off because the diodes will be reverse biased. In this case, let me draw the circuit diagram. So I have shown here that D1 and D3 are short circuited because they are forward biased, the diodes, and D2 and D4 are open circuit. Then the current would be flowing in this way through the circuit. So the voltage across the resistor would be positive on this side and negative on this side. So the node C would be at higher potential compared to D. Now if you find out what is this current value, we can say that I is equal to VI over RL, which is the load resistor here. But if you consider the forward resistance of both the diodes in the current flowing path, then the value would be VI over 2RF plus RL. In fact, we can write this as I m sin alpha, where I m is equal to Vm over 2Rf plus Rf. Now let's investigate for the second case where alpha is in between pi and 2 pi, the second half of the wave or negative half of the wave, where Vi is negative, in which case point B would be at higher potential compared to point A, or node B is at higher potential compared to node A. In that case, D2 and D4 will be on. D2 and D4 will be on diodes. D1 and D3 diodes will be off. So let me draw the circuit diagram for that here. VI, reference direction is taken here, but we know that VI is negative, which means node A will be at lower potential compared to node B. Hence we are showing that D2 and D4 diodes will be forward biased. 
if you see the actual current direction which would be flowing in this direction so what if we observe the current through the load resistor in both the cases it's in the same direction which means the node C is always at higher potential compared to node D so if I mark the direction it's always C to D even in the first case it is C to D hence even though the input voltage is alternating which is changing directions the current flowing through the load resistor is always the same direction now we can write the current equation I is equal to minus VI over 2RF plus RM so we can write this equal to minus IM sin alpha in fact if we see here that sin alpha for this range of alpha pi to 2 pi would be negative so negative of negative would be positive <clears throat> so which means the current flowing through the resistor which I am actually writing here would be of this form so having seen the operation of the bridge rectifier in both the positive half of the input wave and the negative half of the input wave now let me write the output current equation that is I is equal to I am sin alpha this is for alpha in between 0 and pi and it will be minus I am sin alpha between pi and 2 pi for alpha now this output current equation is same that we have seen even in center tap full wave rectifier I have shown the waveforms here this is for the input voltage and in fact this is the current supplied by the transformer and to distinguish let me just put this is the current flowing through the load IL in fact the current equation we have written here is corresponding to the load so this is what the bridge rectifier circuit does the bridge circuit is taking the current from the transformer and making sure it flows through the resistor in the same direction even though the input voltage keeps alternating in fact even the input current keeps alternating but the bridge circuit makes sure that the current flows in the same direction through the load resistor so let me show it here in the second figure that input voltage is sinusoid in fact if you observe even the current would be sinusoid but current through the load if you observe would be like this similarly even the output voltage also because output voltage is nothing but output current times the load resistor now having known the output current equation which is in fact exactly the same to that of the center tapped full wave rectifier hence the components that we would find like the DC component of the output current will be equal to 2 times I m over pi so this is one of the first parameters we have seen and coming to the second parameter we have seen the RMS quantity of the output current which is I m over square root 2 and we have seen even the fill factor which is given by I RMS over I DC value which is pi divided by 2 times square root 2 and the fourth quantity we have seen that is I dash RMS which was given by square root of I RMS square minus I DC square in fact I dash RMS is nothing but the RMS value of the output currents AC component and the fifth component found the ripple factor is given by I dash RMS over I DC which is nothing but square root of F square minus 1 we found this to be 0 0.483 in the next video we will see the efficiency of bridge rectifier if you like the video please press the thumbs up button if you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe and thank you for watching